And joining me now is Dr. Palani Vail Thyagarajan, the Finance Minister of Tamil Nadu. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Dr. Thyagarajan. Make sense of this for us because the centre goes ahead and announces an excise duty cut on petrol by a record 8 rupees per litre and 6 rupees on diesel. And then the Tamil Nadu government says, look, we are not going to cut any taxes because that would not be a fair and reasonable thing to do. Explain those words for us, fair and reasonable. Yeah, I wonder, Rajvi, first of all, thank you for having me. But I wonder how come you guys get fed words like record? When they raised it to almost 30 rupees on diesel and they raised it 28, 27 rupees or 23 rupees on petrol, did you guys talk about record raises then? They have cut some portion of what they raised. All of a sudden you start talking record as if they're like, you know, doing things never seen in the history of the world. They are still three times the rate they were or more or five times the rate they were on diesel and double the rate they were on uh, petrol when they inherited the government. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's not get carried away, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. when in the history of the 11 raises did they ever talk to any state government and say, you raise with me or you raise alongside or what are your thoughts about my raise? I don't understand why this country seems to be in this like kind of collective insanity that every time they say something, you all jump as if this is a gospel truth come down from God. Where in the constitution does it say that because the union says so, the states have to cut? No, no, it's not about, it, you are not so obligated, no, no, you are not obligated to cut, Dr. Tiagrajan. The question is, why do you say it is unfair and unreasonable for you to do so? The fact is, because the state, the, have, the center you, has taken the burden by cutting the additional excise duty. It's very clear that the burden of more than 2.21 lakh crores of this cut is going on the center. Why would states not take the cue? First of all, you need to do your math. Just because they tell you some number doesn't imply that number is correct what the fuel consumption over the last five years average if we take there's no way they're losing that much money anyway that's it let them uh, give that hype no no that's Second, that's the claim they raise, that, no, that no. claim they, they that raise. claim is that's what it's going to cost the yeah, exchequer that's fine they can, i can claim anything then somebody has to do the math i'm i've done the math the math is very high i'm saying they raised it they cut it they have not cut it nearly as much as they raised it why is that a moral high ground you talk as if they have done something like you know self-sacrificing I they have that. unlimited ability to I borrow. Nobody the, uh, polices With due regard, sir, before we buy, let me say, I haven't said that the center is taking the moral high ground. All I'm saying is the center has taken a decision which many people were expecting and were hoping for. Why are states not taking the cue? Explain that to me, opposition rule states. No, no, no. I don't understand why states should take the cue from the center. You keep asking me a question that makes no sense to me. For example, the government of Tamil Nadu cut the VAT back in August of 2021. Mm -hmm. Should the government have taken, the union government have taken a cue from the Tamil Nadu government? What are you talking about? The constitution gives completely different responsibilities as far as money management is concerned to the union, completely different ones to the states. And surprisingly, for the first time, the Supreme Court has opined on the state's right to legislate their own revenues in the GST judgment that came down four days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why you keep saying there has to be any interlinkage. What were they doing when they raised, did we raise? They have cut back about half of what they raised. Mm -hmm. Our predecessors, in the history of the DMK government, we have never raised the VAT on petrol or diesel, ever. In the previous government under Thalavar Kalangit, they cut it three times. In this government under my leader, we cut it once. And every time they have cut the taxes because we do ad valorum VAT, we have lost another 1 rupee 69 on petrol and another 1 rupee and uh, 6 or so. No, I'll tell you exactly. A 1 rupee... Uh, 76 mm -hmm. on diesel because our ad valorum is on top of their excise. So we are going along. If we really wanted to assert our independence, we would change the structure of our VAT and get back to the number we had budgeted for when we did our budgets. Dr. You remember Thia there's something called Dr. Dr. Thia Thia no, 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 Dr. Thia Thia we had to balance our budget. No, no, step back. There are two issues you seem to be raising. Number one, you are suggesting that they, if at all, uh, states are expected to take a cue from the center, then the center should have consulted the state both when raising the uh, uh, taxes and now when lowering the taxes. Your critics will argue that when, for example, the DMK was in power with the UP at the center between 2004 and 14, it's not as if every time uh, taxes were raised or cut, the states were consulted. I mean, you seem no to problem. be arguing, no saying no that problem. consultation no should take no, no, place. No, 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 no problem. Then let's go back to that. Let the constitution apply. Why all of a sudden do you have a new moral ground or a new standard or a new bedrock that every time they cut, we have to act on their cue? 
We act as we see fit. The Constitution empowers us to do so. We have multiple responsibilities to balance. After one year of record improvement in our finances, we still have almost 50,000 crore revenue deficit. That is grossly outside the FRBM FRA Act. If we don't correct that, who will mm -hmm. we go to and ask for authorization? Again, back to this union government. So Let we are doing as we see fit. The chief you minister will tell me what day to cut. Mm -hmm. Let us be very clear. Two mm -hmm. things benefit Tamil Nadu greatly compared to the country average. Our inflation is only about 5.4%. The country average is 8%. In some states, it's more than 9%. Mm -hmm. Number two, our growth has been really good, good above, above 9% for the last year and projected this way. So we don't yet see the need to take any additional action. I've already told you we have lost almost 2,000 crores of revenue on petrol and diesel because of the union's cut. Before that, we voluntarily cut. Before the union cut in 2021 November, we cut in August. No, no, I, we lost money see, then also. So we are you know, managing our finances the way the people who elected us expect us to do under the constitution. We don't no, take excuse from anybody. No, no. Therefore, your second reluctance seems to come from the fact that you cannot take more strain on your revenue. Now, you might recall the Prime Minister last month had invoked the spirit of cooperative federalism, saying had Karnataka not cut taxes, it would have collected an additional over 5,000 crores in revenue. Gujarat would have collected 3,500, 4,000 crores more. If certain states can do it, why can't others? The see, indication I, I was that Tamil Nadu, Bengal, today Mamta Banerjee is also saying that she is not going to cut taxes. Because she wants no, no, you, you, can't keep prop, you can't keep parroting these propaganda statements. I ask you two questions. My friend uh, Kanubai Desai has not cut in Gujarat this time. Why, do you, why don't you remind me of that? Why don't you tell me that Madhya Pradesh still has the highest VAT on petrol? Is it a BJP government running Madhya Pradesh or a DMK government running Madhya Pradesh? You the guys take collective the data. Fact, what fact, you Just a minute, sir. Don't no, no, the fact, no, no, one minute. Dr. Thyagarajan, at the moment, petrol prices, rupees per litre, Delhi 96.72, Kolkata 106.03, Mumbai 111.35, Chennai 102.63, Bangalore 101.94, Ahmedabad is 96.49, so Ahmedabad much lower. The difference between Ahmedabad and Mumbai is 15 rupees. Between Ahmedabad and Chennai yeah, is 6 rupees. Mumbai is, Mumbai is Mumbai, Gujarat is Gujarat, Tamil Nadu is Tamil Nadu. There's a reason the constitution envisioned as having states. Every state's finances are in a different situation. Gujarat doesn't have a revenue deficit nearly as bad. We inherited a mess from our predecessors after eight years. Ask me what is the inflation in Gujarat and what is the inflation in Tamil Nadu? My, my inflation is lower. We are managing the economy better. In almost any statistic, from GSDP growth to inflation to revenue deficit, I mean, not to, revenue, to fiscal deficit, to improvement in one year, Tamil Nadu has outperformed any other state or the union. So the revenue deficits that, that exist to today, to sir, 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 with due regard, the revenue deficits that exist in several states, including Bengal run by Mamta Banerjee or uh, D uh, DMK run Tamil Nadu, is also because of the enormous amounts you'll have spent on the so-called freebies. You may you, you How make do you all know these what promises component is and what? then find you don't Surely have the I budget to meet it. As well as you, right? Surely I know my job at least as well as you. I know how to get the outcome that my chief minister tells me to get. We will have better growth, lower revenue deficit, lower fiscal deficit, come into compliance in two years, and we have inflation contained and jobs and growth being created. We want to be left alone to do our job without being intruded on by somebody whose average performance in every measure, in every statistic, is much worse than Tamil Nadu's. Please let us do our job. Don't try to drag us down to some lowest common denominator. Leave us be. No, no. That you want you to be left alone, but the fact is, are we saying that when the st when the center does not uh, uh, does not slash fuel prices, the center is targeted, saying the center is uh, has made large amounts of money over the last seven eight years. Mr. Chidambaram's figure is 26.5 lakh crores have been made through uh, 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 through this tax uh, through through taxation on fuel. Now when it slashes it, you say, look. Leave us on our own. Please don't tell us what to do. You can't. Oh, no, you know, you're caught at Chidambaram says between the devil oh, no. and the deep blue sea. I, I know. I'm, I can't be responding to Mr. Chidambaram's statements. I'm telling you what I'm saying, which I put out in a statement. If you haven't read it, I'm happy to send it to you. After these cuts, the union has still doubled the taxes on petrol compared to 14, and more than five times the taxes on diesel compared to 14. If they cut some small part of what they rose exorbitantly, exponentially, mm -hmm. immorally, discompassionately, you guys all jump up and down, cheerleaders saying, oh, what a great man, he has given us partial kindness. 
We never raised it that much. We never raised it at all. Our predecessors in the ADMK never raised it that much. So, there isn't that much for us to cut. Why I can't you look at history? Why do you all? Why do we all have to like uh, suffer collective amnesia? It's not as you say. They came and they only cut. They are, you saying, like are you saying, Dr. Tiagrajan, that you want? Sir, just a minute. Some of it. Are you saying, Dr. Tiagrajan, that you want the government, the central government, to return to pre-2014 figures, levels of excise duty cuts? Is that what not you're pre. saying? Not, not, I'm not asking pre. I'm saying 2014 figures. It's a, it's a written statement. Please, please read. If not, I'll send it to you again. It's a public statement made on behalf of I've, the government of Tamil Nadu. I've issued, read your... Uh, through the DIPR. Sir, are you saying, I want clarity, are you saying therefore that you will cut or you will cut your, uh, uh, your taxes, state taxes, if the centre returns back to 2014 numbers, then you will believe that there's a sense of equality and reasonableness. Is that what you're saying? Aldeep, you need to do some basic math. Hmm. We cut the taxes three rupees ourselves on petrol and the two cuts the union has done has also deprived of our another one rupee and 69 paisa of taxes because we do ad valorum taxes. That was the November, the that was the November tax taxes, cut, sir. No, sir that was the, the November tax cut. cut. No, no, no. That's including the tax cut from day before yesterday. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Were they to cut their taxes back to 2014 levels, our taxes would go down to 2014 levels also. We have already lost 4 rupees 69 paisa per litre on petrol, 3 voluntarily and 169 quasi-involuntarily. We could have rejiggered our VAT or restructured it in rupees versus uh, percentage to overcome their reduction. We didn't. Same way in diesel, we have already lost 1 rupee 76 paisa. When they cut 10 rupees, we lost 110. When they cut 6 rupees, we lost 66 paisa. We have already lost 176. We are just not going chest thumping about it. We are compassionate people. We get outcomes. Our people trust us. We are happy to are, do our job. Those who saying, have raised it excessively should cut right. it back. Those who have raised it excessively cut back part of it and become heroes. Those who have never raised it, those who have already cut it a bit, become villains. What world do we live in? Upside down world. So an honest answer, how much of this then is politics? How much of this is pure economics? How much of this is because of the competitive, the nature of the trust deficit that exists today between the center and the states? That's what's leading to states, particularly opposition states, not willing to simply uh, stand in line every time the center says stand up and, and slash uh, uh, rates. How much of this R is R politics? R I, I, I've known you a little while. Please answer one question for me. You have known Gujarat politics for a long time. You come from around that area of the country. Imagine this was 2013, and the union minister was, uh, union prime minister was uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh. And you know your good friend who was the chief minister of Gujarat at that time. Imagine the union had done all of the things it has done in the last seven years, eight years, let alone in the last two months. Imagine the union had called the states. Imagine Dr. Manmohan Singh had called on all the chief ministers to cut the taxes. What would have been the reaction of the then chief minister of Gujarat? You can't keep making this stuff up, right? There's a no, history. That's, what, that's a bit of water about tree. That's a bit of water about tree. The greatest, the greatest example for me, who I follow, the greatest vocal leader for states' rights in the history of India is through Narendra Modi, the current prime minister, when he was chief minister of Gujarat. I'm only following in his footsteps. I'm not saying anything new. Not 1% of what I'm saying is new. Okay, my, my final question to you, how do you therefore going ahead, given the fact that we are in an environment where global oil prices are likely to remain high, what do you see as a solution to ensure a more reasonable rate is passed on, the benefits are passed on to consumers? Because when oil prices were low, between 2015 and 18, the benefits were never passed on to the consumer. Now we are who, who didn't pass it on? Who didn't, who didn't pass it on? The union sure, sure, didn't pass it on. The center, concede it. I'm conceding that. My point is now in 2022, you tell me, I'm speaking as a consumer and citizen, what's the solution for a more rational tax structure? Rajdeep, I have already made my position clear on the petrol diesel. It's an official statement. I want to talk a bit deeper because you can understand what I'm saying. The job of a ministry of a government as far as the finances and economy goes is to create an environment where inflation is contained to some extent, the monetary policy sets a lot of it, but what is within the fiscal policy constraint of ours, to make sure that inflation is contained, to make sure that growth is good, to make sure that jobs are created. In Tamil Nadu, in the last year, we have done phenomenally well on all three. Inflation is 5.4%, the national average is 7.9. Our per capita income is 3 lakh rupees, which is much higher, double the national average. 
In one year, we have brought the revenue deficit down by 20,000 crores and the fiscal deficit down by more than one percentage point. Our fiscal deficit is 3.5 percent compared to the unions at almost 7 percent. Right? We had a positive growth 2021 when the country had a negative recession of 7.6 percent. We were plus 1.3 or 1.5. This year, we are plus 9 percent when the unions at 8.9. So take the combined effect of two. We have grown substantially better than the national average. What is it you want us to do that we are not already doing? What outcome do you expect better than this? I don't understand. Okay. So your argument is leave the states alone. We will manage our resources. We will manage our finances. Do not dictate to us. You cannot tell us when we have to slash our taxes, when we have to raise it. Am I correct? Broadly, that's the spirit which you want to be implemented. That's how I read the Constitution. Maybe you have a different interpretation. I like to hear it, but that's how I read the Constitution. I'm a follower of the Constitution. That's all. It would seem then that the only long-term solution, and that's my final question, is eventually to find a way in which fuel comes under some kind of a GST regime. We've discussed this in the past, but presumably that will only happen if all the states are on board. Am I correct? And that seems unlikely given that most states are facing revenue pressures. Yeah, there, there's three issues here, uh, Rajiv. The first is the union not only shifted the taxes away from general excise, as the union finance minister very clearly explained. There are four components to excise, and three of them don't get shared to the states. So the shareable portion went down from almost 9 rupees to 1 rupee 40 paisa. So the states actually saw a decrease in revenue, even as the union's revenues and rates tripled and, uh, you know, 10 times uh, in diesel. So the first question is, how is that fair of cess and surcharge? Will that go away? Second question is, GST itself has some structural weaknesses, as you have seen, and as a recent judgment of the Supreme Court has pointed out. I have been the greatest proponent since I became a member that let us work it out, let us strengthen and fix the system, let us make it better. I'm not here just as a critic. I'm here as a member of the council, a member of the GOM mm -hmm. on gaming, horse racing and the casinos, a member of the GOM on structural reform, standing GOM, and doing as much as I can contribute to improve the system. The right. third point is states' rights have been greatly deprived by GST overall, as the ruling in the Supreme Court points out, have been curtailed, constrained. And yeah. so many states may be unwilling to give it up. But as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, I'm okay to give it up as long as the cesses and surcharges are taken out in total. If it comes all under GST, the Chief Minister has told me that's our position. I follow his lead. Okay, let me leave it there. Dr. Uh, Palani Thyagarajan is always uh, combative, but uh, extremely knowledgeable. Appreciate your joining us here on the news today. Thanks very much.